Amen. All right, go ahead and take your Bibles tonight. And we're going to start off reading in the book of Psalms. Psalms 139. Psalm 139. Read a few verses here, and then I'm going to read one verse from Ecclesiastes where we're going to get the title of our message tonight in our text. But, uh, Psalms 139 and verse 19. Before I read this passage, you know... Um, what I'm going to be talking about tonight, I want to kind of show some things. You know, sometimes I'm afraid, as Americans, we spend so much time watching television, uh, listening to radio, just doing all the things that get ourselves dumbed down. We don't ever actually think about things. We don't really think things through. And we hear slogans so many times. You know, we hear commercials. We hear these statements. You just you hear things over and over again. And without even realizing it, we just kind of get brainwashed with stuff. And it's like... People don't realize, they don't ever stop and actually think about what they're saying and how it really doesn't make sense. And um, when it comes to us as, you know, as, as Christians today, we've had so much of this you know, junk from some of these TV preachers and things shoved down our throats, so much of this Joel Osteen junk that goes around when talking about love, 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 that I don't think we realize how much it's affected our thinking. And whenever we pre- you know, a message is preached, like I'm going to be preaching tonight, it really, people, many times they take it the wrong way. But I want us to just kind of think tonight, all right? Just try to you know, clear your head of all the television that you've watched over the years and just kind of, let's look at what the Bible has to say and think about what we're actually saying. If I say something tonight that sounds kind of crazy, like it's a little extreme, you know, let's, let's just think a little bit. And I'm going to show you that a lot of what we're saying and a lot of what we're hearing makes no sense at all. And so, look what it says in Psalms 139, verse 19. It says, Surely thou wilt slay the wicked, O God. Depart from me, therefore, ye bloody men, for they speak evil against thee wickedly, and thine enemies take thy name in vain. Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee, and am not I grieved with those that rise up against thee? I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them, all, I count them mine enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. I, I love those verses, those last two verses there, where it says, Search me, O God. We all know those verses, don't we? We all know the song. The nice, beautiful, peaceful, you know, search me, O God, and know my heart today. Isn't that such a peaceful song? Doesn't that have just a loving, sweet tune? But you all realize those words came directly from the Word of God. And they were stated right after he sang, I hate these people. I hate these people, God. You know, and then he and then he does that. He throws it in about search me, O God, and know my heart. Okay, why why was he saying that? Well, I personally believe that hate is a very dangerous thing. I think there is no doubt that hate is very dangerous. And you know, but at the same time, we're gonna see in the Bible it clearly is appropriate sometimes. But it, it, but it is, it's still dangerous. And most of the time when we hate, it's the wrong kind of hatred, isn't it? it? It's usually the wrong kind. And it would be very easy for us to get ourselves in trouble with hate because of our own selfish, sinful nature. And so, you know, a vast majority of verses in the Bible about hatred, if you just search up all the different ways hate is used and then read the verses, almost all of them, I mean, a vast majority of them at least, are negative. You know, and it's talking about the wrong kind of hatred, but it's very clear in the Bible that sometimes hate is good. In Ecclesiastes chapter three, verse eight, it says a time to love and a time to hate. There, there are some times where we need to hate. But once again, if when you do have these times when you feel that hatred and I hope, okay, and don't get scared tonight. I hope sometimes you feel some hatred. But when you do, I think you need to do like the psalmist did here and say, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my ways. You know, see, if there, uh, see if there be any wicked way in me because this is, this is a dangerous thing. When we hate something, it usually produces sin if we're not careful. Okay? We, all have the things, we all have the things that we hate. Okay? I hate cheese. I talk about it all the time, how much I hate cheese. And one of these days, it's going to get me in trouble because I have that perfect hatred for it. And I wish it didn't exist. I wish it would vanish from the face of the earth. And it would, it would solve a lot of sin in my life because the stinking fast food workers can't stop putting cheese on my sandwich. And then I just want to lose it every time. Yeah, but I'm telling you, one of these days, I'm going to turn into the Hulk and I'm going to get in a lot of trouble. And, you know, 
Uh, and so I do. I worry about it. That you know that my hatred for cheese has only ever produced sin in my life. All right? But at the same time, you know, I do think some things it is appropriate to hate, and I think cheese is one of them. It's gross. It's vile. You know, it's it's all those it's all those things. But yet, when we do, when we feel that hatred come up, it many times it produces sin in our life. And so we ought, we need to understand. We need to be very very careful because I'm going to talk about appropriate hatred tonight. But I, want, I just want us to understand how careful we need to be when it comes to hatred. It's dangerous. And how do we know when hatred is good? Because we do. We all have hatred in our life. Some of it's appropriate. Some, most of it's probably not appropriate. And I personally believe too, and I don't want to get ahead of myself, but we do. We live in a world today where everybody wants to talk about love. It's all supposed to be about love. But y'all understand that if hate is the opposite of love, wouldn't it make sense that the more you love something, the more you're going to hate other things. And I'll show you some examples of that in the Bible, but we do. It's like we have a world today where people, they have all this love, and yet they have no hate. Well, I personally believe if you don't have any hate, you don't have any love. And I'll show you that in a, here in a little bit, but let's, let's look at some things. Go to Matthew chapter 5 and verse 43. Matthew 5, verse 43, I think this passage is one that gets misused uh, sometimes because a lot of the verses about hate are in the Old Testament. And then, you know, you'll get the people come along, oh, that's Old Testament, you know, we're in the New Testament now, we don't hate anymore. But I don't believe that Jesus got rid of hate in the New Testament. But let's look at a verse that people like to use. Matthew 5, verse 43, it says, um, Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, love, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. And notice he said it's been, it's been said, love your neighbor and hate your enemies. Okay? Now, was that taught in the Old Testament to hate your enemies? No. That wasn't taught. But people obviously said that. Okay? It's like a lot of the foolishness that's said in religion today. You know, that, that people will try to throw out there just all this feel-good stuff that people are, think is in the Bible. Whenever you talk about verses about hatred and you read verses about hatred, guess what verse everybody quotes to you all the time? Hate the sin and love the sinner. Now, is that in the Bible? No. But that shocks a lot of people when you tell them that's not in the Bible because it's been quoted so many times. And there's some truth to that. I'm not saying that's a bad, uh, bad statement. But at the same time, it's kind of an incomplete statement. It's, it's kind of a, it, it doesn't completely make sense when we actually start thinking. And we're going to try to think here in this message. But let's keep reading. And so it says, yeah, But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, uh, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh the sun to rise upon the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain upon the just and on the unjust. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same. And if you salute your brethren only, what do you more than others? Do not even the publicans so. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. So we see here uh, a great passage of Scripture from Jesus Christ Himself about loving your enemies. About doing good to them that do evil to you. About you know, loving those who hate you. Uh, you know, doing good to those who despitefully use you and persecute you. And we should definitely do that. And you know what? And this kind of goes along with what I preached this morning about forgiveness. But I do. I have the right to love those who hate me. In fact, I, God expects me to do that. He expects me to love those who hate me and to do good to those who do evil to me. But do I have the right to love those who hate those that I love? So that's, what, that's what we don't think about a lot of times. So just like I have the authority to forgive a debt that is owed to me, do I, I don't have the authority to forgive a debt that's owed to someone else. And so listen, if you come, you know, and, and look, God is love, no doubt about that. Yes, Jesus died for our sins. You know, he said, father, forgive them for they know not what they do. But what is God going to do to those who reject his gift of salvation? He's going to throw them into hell for all eternity. Now, I don't know about that's just not pleasant, is it? But that's what the Bible teaches. And you know what? Before he even throws them all into hell, we know that God is going to send judgment on this earth. There's things that are coming. One of these days, there's going to be hail and fire and brimstone raining down on this earth. Not pleasant. Do you realize that people are going to get burnt and hurt and smashed during that kind of stuff? 
A lot of people are going to get killed from that. There's going to be you know, one third of the vegetation that's going to burn out. That's going to make a lot of people starve. You know, there's going to be a mountain thrown into the sea. There's the seas. A third of the waters are going to be turned into blood. You know, the third of the sun, of the light from the sun, moon, and stars is going to be dark. And we see things like that in the Bible. We see a demonic invasion of locusts that torment men for five months. Not pleasant. One third of mankind killed in a war. We see an earthquake, hailstorms. We see malignant sores that the Bible talks about. They're going to come. It talks about the sun scorching men with fire. It talks about darkness coming over the whole earth. That call, and I don't understand how this works, and I don't want to find out, but this darkness that's going to come is going to cause men to gnaw on their tongues for pain. You know, we forget about all these things. These things are all prophesied. They're going to come. And the Bible says in Revelation 16, verse 4, it says, And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters, and they became blood. And I heard the angel of the waters say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and wast and shalt be, because thou hast judged us. It says, You're righteous, God, because you're judging these people. And then it says, For they have shed the blood of the saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. Do you all realize this judgment that's coming, the world is worthy of it. It deserves it. And, and the, Bible, the Bible is very clear about that. There's a lot of unpleasantness that's coming because, listen, God hates sin, but do you all understand? There is no sin without sinners. And when God pours out His judgment on this earth, who is He pouring it out on? Is He pouring it out on sin or is He pouring it out on sinners? Okay? Now listen, God has love. But who is it that's doing all these things to man? It's God that's doing this. And He's righteous because He's doing this. And listen, we deserve it too. But thank God, if we've accepted that gift of salvation, we don't get what we deserve. But understand, everybody else does because they are, they are worthy. We are worthy, but thank God, we've received salvation by grace through faith. And so it's very clear that God hates sin and God is going to not judge sin. He's going to judge sinners because they are worthy. They are going to be cast in hell for all eternity. And so we see here in this, you know, when we go back to Matthew, when it's talking about, you know, loving your enemy and all these things, okay, this, what this is teaching us here, you know, this isn't telling us that, um, you know, just you know, love everybody that there is. But when somebody is your own person, this is talking about loving your own personal enemy. This isn't talking about the enemies of God. Listen, if we love God, how, do we, how are we supposed to love the enemies of God? That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I mean, it would, it, you know, it would be difficult uh, for on our, our friendship if there was somebody that was your enemy. Okay, maybe you have a neighbor that just gives you grief. Every time they see you, they throw you a dirty gesture. You know, they just egg your, you know, maybe they egged your house the night before. And then you see me going over to their house and just hanging out with them. And we're having a great time. And these people, they have nothing but bad things to say about you. They, I mean, they just torment you all the time. And then I'm going over to their house and we're out going golfing together. And I say I'm your friend, but I'm hanging out with these people like everything's wonderful. Now, you, if, if I do that, you're going to look at me and think, you know what? Pastor Tommy does not love me very much. This person clearly is doing me evil that I do not deserve, and he has no problem being friends with them. Something is wrong, and we have gotten so caught up in this love, 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 love. And it, listen, remember, if hate's the opposite of love, the more we love, the more hate we're going to have too. And we've tried to leave out hate, and we don't even realize we are to the point now where God's people are friends with his enemies where we're making friends with the world. And the Bible tells us not to do that. The Bible tells us we're not supposed to do that. And listen, this, it's not about making, you know, if, if somebody's being mean to you, you can do that. But if they're mean, being mean to God, I mean, what if there was a person out there who hates my wife? And I mean, they do, they hate her. They hate everything about her. They can do nothing but say nasty things about her. And yet I'm, I'm best friends with that person. I'm hanging out with that person. He's posting nasty stuff about her online, and then I'm leaving the house, and I'm like, hey, I'm, where are you going? She's like, where are you going? I'm going to go hang out with this guy. Hey, didn't you see what he just said about me online? Well, yeah, but he's my friend. Yeah, but he's my enemy. <laughs> yeah, but I, you should love your enemies. Well, you know what? You should love your enemies. 
Okay. But listen, if I see someone doing something harmful to my wife, should I just stand there and say, I'm just going to love that person? No, I should intervene, shouldn't I? Or somebody that's doing evil to my friend. We talk about the whole turn the other cheek thing. Okay? Somebody smites me on my cheek, I can turn him the other cheek. You smite my wife's cheek, okay? I'm going to smite your cheek, all right? And your stomach, and your nose. And, you know, you're, I mean, I'm, I'm coming after you. And I should do that. That would be appropriate. If somebody is out there and they are, they're bashing me. I can, I can let that go. I can forgive that person. I can just, I cannot let it affect one thing I do. But if they're doing it to someone I love, if I really love that person, all of a sudden now I'm going to have a huge problem with that individual. That, you know, and we, we, we all know how it feels. You, you can come after me, but don't you dare go after my family. Why do we say things like that? Because we love those people. Okay? And listen, even in your own family, you have fights. Okay. We, you know, how many of us, you know, we fought like cats and dogs with our brothers or sisters. But if somebody outside the family ever messed with our brothers and sisters, man, it was on, wasn't it? Listen, you know, I can, I can pull my sister's hair, but you can't pull my sister's hair. You know, there's going to be a fight if that happens. And is that not appropriate? And listen, we have, we've, we've raised up this most, you know, just passive generation in the world. Just nothing affects us. I don't know if everybody's just doped up or what. But we don't let anything fire us up. It's all supposed to be about love. It's like we're supposed to expected we're to just sit there and somebody can be just doing horrible things to our friends and we're just supposed to sit there and smile like Joel Osteen and act like everything's fine. No, we should not. Man, we ought to get involved if someone's attacking someone that we love and yet people attack God all the time. They're haters of God. You got the homosexual crowd. The Bible calls them haters of God. And we've got churches today figuring out what can we do to bring these people in? What can we do to show them the love of Jesus? Well, the Bible says they rejected the love of Jesus. When they knew God, they glorified him not as God. These people, they've already had it shared with them and they rejected it. God has given them over to a reprobate mind. They hate God. And yet I'm supposed to love that person. I'm supposed to make friends with that person. These people that have gone, they go against nature. I mean, they do. They deny God. They blaspheme God. And I'm just supposed to not have a problem with that. I'm sorry. Not going to happen. I love God. And because I love God, I hate those who hate God. I hate those who are his enemies. And I'll show you more in the scriptures to show that that is appropriate. But once again, that love your enemies thing. I can love my enemies, but I shouldn't love your enemies. I'm not going to love the enemies of those who I love. And I, 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 it makes no sense to say that, you know, that we're supposed to be loving and then just go loving people who hate God and who are our enemies or our friends' enemies, our family's enemies. In Job 31, verse 28, it says, This also were an iniquity to be punished by the judge, for I should have denied the God that is above if I rejoiced at the destruction of him that hated me or lifted up myself when evil found him. We should not rejoice when our enemy falls. Okay, When those who are going against us, we should not rejoice when bad things happen to them. But listen, if you're out there and you're trying to run my family over with a car, and you hit a tree and die. All right. Okay. <laughs> You're trying to hurt my family. I don't have to be okay with that. You know, I, 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 can, I can rejoice in that. You know, we do. We rejoice in this country whenever terrorists are defeated. People rejoice when Osama bin Laden was killed. They rejoice when Saddam Hussein was executed. We rejoice in those things. We rejoice when we win wars. And that's appropriate because these people are our enemies. They're trying to hurt us. They're trying to hurt people we love. But then we're told that, you know, people like the homosexual crowd, we shouldn't rejoice when bad things happen there. Why not? These people, they're destroying society. They're molesting children. They're spreading disease. They're, I mean, they're ruining our country and we're just supposed to just love them. Well, I'm sorry. I can't because I love regular people way too much. And therefore, I, I'm not, I just, I'm sorry, I'm not feeling the love, folks. I'm not feeling the love for them because I feel too much love for everyone else. And we can, man. I don't care how many hippie songs you sing. I don't care how many Joel Osteen messages I listen to. 
I'm de- it's not going to make me feel love for those who hate my enemies or hate my friends, hate those who I love. And so, uh, you know, Proverbs 24, or 17, Rejoice not when thine enemy falleth, and let th- not thine heart be glad when he stumbleth, lest the Lord see it and displease him and turn away his wrath from him. When it's, come, when it's somebody that's our enemy, we have the authority, the ability to let things go when things are done to us, but not when they're done to someone else. We don't have that right. We should not do that. There are folks out there who are weak, and there are those who would take advantage of the weak, and we should not be okay with that. We should not turn a blind eye to that and just say, well, you know, I, I just, I'm not going to do anything because I love both of them. Now listen, if you love the one who's being taken advantage of, you're going to have a problem with the one taking advantage of them. And and it it doesn't make any sense. You can do it to your own personal enemy, but it is not to the enemies of God and everyone else. That doesn't even make sense. Nowhere in the Bible are we told to do that. In fact, we see the opposite. But people will take these verses and they will. They will apply them to just all the bad people. And just make it like we're just supposed to just love, 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 no bad feelings, no hate. And that just, that doesn't make sense. You cannot be a loving person without hating those who would do evil to others. It doesn't even make sense. And we just, we don't think about this stuff because we do. We just listen to slogans. We read bumper stickers and we, you know, we go off that stuff and we do, you know, the world has made hate. Such a bad word. And yes, it is a dangerous thing. There are some things that are dangerous, but they're good. Okay? I think guns are a great thing. But they're dangerous too. Bad things can happen with them. But at the same time, I sure am glad we have them. And hate's dangerous. Hate's dangerous because we're bad. But the hate itself is not bad. Guns are not bad by themselves. But in the hands of a sinful person, it is a dangerous thing. And so we do, we have to be, you have to be careful with guns and you have to be careful with hate. We don't want to, we don't want to go crazy with it. We don't want to just go wildly pointing our hate at people. Okay. Just like they say with a gun, you know, don't point it unless you intend to shoot. And you know, don't just go around hating just for the fun of it. it it's, it's dangerous. We can get ourselves in trouble, but we do. We need to say, I can turn the other cheek if someone smites me, but not if they smite my wife. Not if they smite somebody I love. Listen, not even if they smite a stranger. If I'm out there and I see somebody, you know, going, you know, some guy smacking some woman. I ought to, at that point, have just made an enemy. I, at that point, I see some guy out there beating up a woman. I don't know either of them. But you know what? If I'm a loving person, I'm going to have a problem with that. And some rage should well up inside of me. And I should start doing something very hateful to that man. And that's called beating him down. No, I'll just call the cops. Yeah. No, I'm going to go beat them up, and then I'll call the cops. You know, that, that's, what, that's what we should do. Uh, you know, no, we never resort to violence. Well, I'm sorry. When you love someone, you will do that. When you're a loving person, it will cause you to have some violence sometimes. And you know what? I mean, even in the animal kingdom, it's like that. You know, there's a lot of animals that aren't real dangerous unless you start messing with their young. And then they get dangerous. I got scared to death one time. There were these geese. I was out riding my bike on the canal, and there were these baby geese, and I went right on my bike. I wasn't going to do anything. And man, that mama came at me and started making this noise. Freaked me out. Okay, now listen, I think I could have I taken her. I, I could have ta- taken her, but with that crazy noise she was making at me, man, it, it freaked me out pretty good. And then later when I was on my way back, I was like, there she, there she is again. I was like, oh boy. And man, I tell you, I got as far away from them as I could. And she came at me again, did the hissing thing again. It freaked me out. You know what? That's just natural, folks. That, you know, that goose, it hated me. Why? At the th- just because it thought I might do something to its young. That is natural. It is not natural for you to see these animals that are out there destroying society, these wicked people, and just look at them with love and a smile. That makes no sense at all. Listen, you're, no, you're worse than an animal if you love people like that. If you love these sick, perverted weirdos that are out there that are just destroying society, molesting children, you are more disgusting than an animal. You have no more love than an animal in you. And I am, I'm sick of hearing these people talk about us like we're haters. Listen, you're, you're messed up 
if you love that. You are, you are completely against nature when you love people like that. It, do, it doesn't make any sense. If people would just stop and think for two seconds and just forget about the stuff they've been brainwashed with on television, man, you know, maybe we'd start being normal again in this country. But no, people, are, they're brainwashed. But look, look, God is pleased. God is pleased when we get fired up on his behalf. Look at what it says in Numbers chapter 25. I, uh, maybe I shouldn't like this story, but I like this story. Turn over to Numbers chapter, chapter 25. In verse 6, And behold, one of the children of Israel came and brought unto his brethren a Midianitish woman in the sight of Moses and in the sight of all the congregation of the children of Israel, who were weeping before the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And when Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, saw it, he rose up from among the congregation and took a javelin in his hand, and he went after the man of Israel into the tent and thrust both of them through the man of Israel and the woman through her belly, so the plague was stayed from before the children of Israel. Ah, that's awful violent right there. Now listen, we don't have the authority to throw javelins through people, all right? God has not put us as Christians in authority over the government. We are not the ones who are to... Uh, you know, execute wrath on evildoers. Okay, that is not our place. So nobody read this story and go throwing javelins through wicked people, all right? So I, you know, don't try this at home. But back then, the priests and all, you know, the, the you know, government and everything, they were all kind of one. So it was appropriate. But it says, and those that died in the plague were 20 and 4,000. So that was awful hateful throwing a spear through those two people. But listen, what they were doing, it brought a curse on them, it brought a plague in the camp, and over 20, 24,000 people died. And you know what, Phineas, he loved those 24,000 people that died because of those two people. Amen. And not only did he love those 24,000 people, he loved the Lord also. And look what it says in verse 10. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Phineas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, hath turned my wrath away from the children of Israel, while he was zealous for my sake among them, that I consume not the children of Israel in my jealousy. Wherefore say, behold, I give unto him my covenant of peace. Y'all see that right there? God kept the priesthood in the line of Phineas here because he was zealous for the Lord's sake. He loved the people and he really loved God. And when he saw those people sinning against God and the judgment that it was bringing on the people of God, he got zealous for the Lord's sake and he went and he put a spear through those people. I mean, you have to throw that thing pretty hard. You have to be pretty mad. You have to be pretty angry to throw a spear through two people like that. But that is exactly what he did. And listen, if somebody, you know, just, just admit it, all right? You know, ladies, y'all y'all want your husband to be protective, don't you? And ladies, you know, don't, you know, wouldn't you, how would you feel if some guy was out there messing with you and your husband was just like, ah, it's no big deal. Let's just be Christian and be patient and love him. No, what do you want to see him? Do you want to see him beat the guy down, don't you? You know, hopefully you're, he would get mad. Hopefully your husband would do everything he could to stop that guy. Why? Because it would show you, hey, he cares about me. That made him mad. If, I mean, I'm telling you, in people today, they are so passive, nothing makes them mad anymore. You know why? Because they have no love. They're not loving people. And God saw that here that because of his love for God, this made Phineas angry. And he did. He got zealous and God saw that and it pleased him. And you know what? If someone's attacking me, you know, if somebody's making, you know, doing personal attacks at me, you know, I, I should, you know, let it roll off, not let it bother me. But you know what? I'll admit when you see somebody come to your defense, it feels pretty good, doesn't it? And when there's people out there hating God, and then we do, we come to his defense, it gets us fired up, I believe, it makes God feel good. But when we are, when we're just these wimpy, sissy, passive people, oh, uh, you know, God can take care of himself. Well, sure he can take care of himself, but you know what? Why don't we, if we love him, aren't we going to want to do something about it? Isn't it going to bother us just a little bit? But God is, he's pleased when we're zealous for him. He's pleased when we're jealous for his sake. Paul, when I can take time to read it in 2 Corinthians 11, you know, he talked about he was jealous over those people. With the God, he was jealous for the Lord's sake. God had espoused them. And here these people are, they're getting mixed up in all this false doctrine and stuff. And he was jealous for the Lord's sake. Listen, if, if one, if, uh, as a man in here, if you're my friend and I see your wife 
with some other man, if I'm your friend, that's going to upset me. That's going to make me angry seeing your wife be unfaithful to you. Why? Because you're my friend. And what they're doing is going to hurt you. And I, and I, I hopefully would do something about it. I hopefully would say something about it. If I, and if I love you, it is, it's going to cause something to well up inside of me. And Paul did, he loved these people, but he loved God. And here they are doing something he knew would displease God. And that made Paul mad. Paul didn't say, well, it's none of my business. That's between them and God. But you know what? God likes it when we get in his business. Just because, because we love him. And that is, that's the new attitude today. Oh, you know what I mean? The churches are, they're going bad. Churches are going, you know, they're going liberal. They're going weak. And well, it's none of our business. You know, we, you know, pastor, you shouldn't say anything about other churches. You know, you shouldn't talk about people that are out there spreading false doctrine. You know, as long as it's not in your church, it's not your problem. Well, I'm sorry, but I believe that those are God's people in these churches. And I believe that that stuff that's going on upsets God. And so, you know, what? it makes me mad. I'm jealous for the Lord's sake because I love him and that love I have for God is going to make me hate some of these preachers that are going around preaching false doctrine and that are destroying God's people. I just can't help it. I love people. I love God. I love fundamental Baptist and these people that are out there ruining fundamental Baptist. I'm sorry. I hate them. I can't help it. I love God's people too much. And therefore, because I love them, it's going to cause me to hate those who are ruining them and destroying them. And I don't see where you can find I, I'm wrong in that in the Bible. I think, I think it's very clear that it lines up with the Bible. But we do way too many weak, passive preachers preaching a weak, passive message. And it's turning out Christians who are not bothered by sin. Look, look, this, this, type, this type of preaching I'm doing tonight, it's rare today. All right, the lovey-dovey stuff, very common. But what do we have today? What is this generation? Just they're not bothered by sin. Yeah, it's it's all no, it's all good. Don't let it bother you. Listen, sin ought to it ought to anger us. You know, way too many Reverend Aldens. Y'all remember Reverend Alden from Little House in the Prairie? That guy, he was so weak and passive. There was the one time that when he put the one guy up against the wall and they ran those guys out of the church. It was the one time he showed any manhood on that show. And I was like, all right, I like that episode. But all the other ones, he was always just so weak and passive. It was just, ah, I hated it. And you know what? I think it rubbed off on a generation of preachers. Just, I mean, I'm telling you, just it, 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 it makes me sick. But, you know, we have, we've been, pre- these guys, they've been preaching love the homos so much that the people in these churches, they've started looking like homos and literally becoming homos. I mean, look, look at the, the, how much homosexuality is infiltrating churches. Maybe it's because we're teaching people, you know, love them. You know, it's okay. And it is, it's rubbing off. And if it, you have, listen, if you have the spirit of God, it's going to cause you to love what he loves and hate what he hates. And there's lots of things that God hates. And, and you, can't, you can't love a person that hates who you love. And, you know, and I, do, I have many, I've got some strained relationships going on right now because there's people that I love who hate other people that I love. So what do you do in that situation? What do you do when one person you love hates someone else you love? Well, I'm going to side with the person doing right. And the one who's right, I'm going to, I'm going to side with them and I just might have to break fellowship from these other people. It's hard. It stinks. I do. I, I care about a lot, a lot of these people. But listen, when you're attacking somebody for the wrong thing, I'm not going to follow a multitude to do evil. Amen. I'm not going to do that. Well, I'm going I'm to do the, I'm going to follow those who are doing right. I'm going to stand with those who are doing right, those who are preaching the truth. And it would, it would not be okay for me to fellowship with someone that hates my wife, someone who's going around saying bad things about them, someone who hates my friend. It makes no sense at all. And listen, there are those that God hates. You don't have to turn to these, but Psalms 5, 4, For thou art a God that hath, that um, are not a God that hath pleasure in wickedness, neither shall evil dwell with thee. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. Thou shalt destroy them that speak leasing. The Lord will abhor the bloody and deceitful man. Pretty strong language right there. Uh, verse 11, chapter 11, verse 5. The Lord trieth the righteous, but the wicked in him that loveth violence, his soul hateth. 
You all see that? I mean, that's pretty strong language. Well, this is Old Testament. Well, you know what? The Bible says in the New Testament we're supposed to be singing psalms. These are the psalms. We're supposed to be singing these things. We should know these things. Okay? Psalms is New Testament doctrine. All right? Just, we, we need to realize that. And we, if we have the Spirit of God, we will feel the same way about things that God does as long as we're walking in the Spirit. If we're walking in the Spirit, we will feel the way God does about things. If we're walking in the flesh, we won't. Sin won't bother us. You know, queerness won't bother us. You know, uh, false doctrine won't bother us if we're walking in the flesh. But if we're walking in the Spirit, it will. It will bother us. It's like, well, you know, God, it, it's, it's the sin. It's not the people. You know, and, but the, let's look at a few more verses here too. Look, look what this says. In Proverbs 8, verse 13 says, The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, arrogancy, and the evil way, and the froward mouth do I hate. Now, wait a minute. It just says the froward mouth. Now, does it make any sense to just hate a body part? So, I don't hate you. I just hate your mouth. You know, I don't, you know, look, uh, Proverbs 6, 16. These six things that the Lord hate. Yea, seven are abomination, a proud look. I don't hate you. I just hate your face. I hate, I hate that look in your face. A lying tongue. I don't hate you. I just hate that thing in your mouth. You know, uh, hands that shed innocent blood. I don't hate you. I just hate your hands. And heart that deviseth wicked imaginations. I don't hate you. I just hate your heart. But once again, when it talks about the heart, it's not talking about the blood pumping organ in our body. It's just talking about the very center of who we are. And God says, I hate that about you. Does God hate the very center of who we are, but not hate us when we're these, this way? No, it, it's the, sorry, folks. I hate to, you know, rain on your parade. You've heard all this stuff for years, but it's not just the sin. It's the people. There is no sin without sinners. And the heart, it makes no sense to say, no, God doesn't hate them. He just hates their body parts. You know, and it, that, listen, we do. We hate the body parts of those we hate. You ever, you ever told me, I, I hate the, I hate your face. Okay. Now, listen, is it their face so much that we hate? No, it's just we hate them. And so we don't even want to look at their face. It's not that there's just something about their looks that just goes against us. No, we hate them. All right? you know, and so it, does, it doesn't make sense. When God's saying that, it's just showing how he feels about them. And you know, feet that be swift and running to mischief. My wife actually does hate my feet. She's always talking about how gross my feet are. So maybe you can just hate a body part. I don't know. <laughs> Verse 9, a false witness that speaketh lies. And he that soweth discord among the brethren. It doesn't make sense to say God just hates the body parts. Okay? Your body, it does what you want it to do. And you are the one that's causing sin. You are the one doing the things that God hates. And we need to understand that you know, God, does, God hates this stuff. God loves everybody. Yes, God loved everyone by sending his son to die for them. That was a very, very loving thing. But God's feelings towards sin and sinners has never changed. Okay? He hates it. He can't help but hate it. He's holy. His holiness is going to cause him to hate sin and sinners. Yet, because, I mean, he is the source of love. He did everything that could be possibly be done so our sin could be paid for, so we would not have to go to hell. He gave His own Son. Jesus Christ died on the cross. But those who reject that gift of salvation will suffer the wrath of God. And you know what? When Jesus comes back at Armageddon and He is treading the wine press of the fierceness of His wrath, I don't see anywhere where it says He's going to be crying while He's doing that. He's not, I don't see anywhere in the Bible when people are being cast into the lake of fire, He's going to be crying. Now listen, you and I, when we see something bad happen to those we love, we're going to shed a tear. And one of the main reasons we're going to shed a tear is because you always ask that question, did I do enough? Where, you know, we ask that question, where did I go wrong? And many times we have regrets. But anybody think God's going to have any regrets? Is there anything that God did wrong? Is there anything that He could have done more to help? Did He make any mistakes? No. He didn't do any of that. He has no reason to shed a tear when people are being cast into the lake of fire. He did everything that could possibly be done. And therefore, in His holiness and righteousness, He will cast them in the lake of fire and the smoke of their torment will ascend forever and ever. And it's going to happen in the presence of the Lamb and of the holy angels. And we need, we need to understand that is how God feels. And we ought to feel the same way. And when we feel hate, 
you know, what, uh, when we fail to hate what should be hated, we, become, we end up becoming overcome by what we should have hated. Look at what it says in Ezekiel chapter 35. This is what's happened in America. Because thou hast, Ezekiel 35, 5, because thou hast, hast had a perpetual hatred and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity, in the time of their iniquity, hath an end. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord, I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee, sith thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. They, these people, they, uh, Mount Seir, I believe it was, God was pronouncing a judgment against here, I can't remember, but they didn't hate the shedding of innocent blood. We should hate the shedding of innocent blood. And because it didn't bother them, innocent blood being shed, God said, you know what? Your blood's going to be shed because you didn't hate it. We should hate Innocent, we should hate innocent blood being shed. But you know what? We don't hate abortion in this country today. We don't hate abortion, and yet we're being overrun by abortion. We don't hate perversion, and we're being overrun by perversion. We don't hate injustice, and look at all the injustice that's going on. You know, we don't hate our politicians. We don't hate those that are in leadership that are ruining our country. Oh, no, you know, we got to love these people. You know, we got to love Obama. We got to love all, all these, you know, Trump. We got to love these people. Listen, if they were my own personal enemy, I can love them. But these people are destroying innocent people. They are ruining our country and hurting the lives of millions and millions of people. We have the right to hate that. And we have the right to hate them. When we see these politicians just passing this wicked legislation, listen, if you want to go ahead and pray for God to maybe send some judgment a little early, I don't think it's wrong for you to do that. They are hurting people, destroying the innocent. When they're passing more stuff, just making abortion more possible, when they're funding Planned Parenthood, that kind of stuff ought to cause something to well up inside of us and get us a little bit fired up. But it doesn't even bother people today. And because we don't hate it, we are being overrun by these things. It's all over the place. Perversion everywhere. I mean, it's, it's not uncommon anymore to see a queer when you're out in public. They're not in the closet anymore. And we are, we're being overrun because we didn't hate it. Innocent blood being shed. We're doing it in our nation. Going in you know, with no reason at all getting involved in wars we shouldn't be involved in, shedding innocent blood, and other countries doing it in our own country, and it doesn't even bother us. And because we don't hate it, I believe we're going to continue being overrun by these things until we get fired up, until we start showing some signs of life. And hating these things, I believe we're going to continue to be overrun by these things. And we don't, we don't hate perversion. We don't hate cross-dressing. We don't hate sodomy. And look at what's going on. We've got to hate these things. In America, we, we don't hate the wicked that are leading our country. And now we're being destroyed by these wicked people. And we, got, we do. We have these pansies going around loving everybody, and they're just watching people suffer and die. And it's a, it's a crying shame. And you can blame sin like the Democrats blame guns for murder. But things don't come, things like murder, they don't come from guns. They come from the heart of man. It says in Matthew 15, 19, for out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, theft, false witness, blasphemies. We're allowed to hate all those sins, aren't we? We all know that even in a liberal church, you're allowed to hate all those sins. But the Bible says those sins, they come from the heart of man. That's, and those are the things that defile a man. The Bible teaches. And they come from the heart of man. And it is. It is ridiculous for us to go blaming sin. You know, hate the sin, love the sinner. Well, you know what? Then we should hate the guns and not those shooting people, not the mur murderers, not those killing people. You know, next time, maybe if, you know, if we're going to have that attitude, next time somebody shoots somebody and murders somebody in cold blood, what we should do is go and melt the gun down. And then that will pay for the crime, right? No, that make, doesn't make any sense. The gun didn't do it by itself. A bad guy did it. We should go melt them down. We should, we should take care of them. That, that would make sense. But, you know, these things, so they do, they, they come from the heart of man. 
not, not the blood pumping organ, but the very center of who we are. They come from our own wicked soul. And you are, you're a fool if you blame guns for murder. And you're just as much a fool if you blame sins for the evil in the world. It makes no sense. And you know what? Pastor Trendy wearing his pink shirt, he's going to try to back out of these things. He just wants to focus on being loving to his community. So he's going to do everything. I just, I just want to be loving in my community. He says we should just focus on love. It's all about love. God is love. But you know what? If hate is the opposite of love, you know, and then the more you love, the more hate you will have. A time to love and a time to hate. If you love life, you will hate those who take away life. If you love happiness, you will, you will hate those who will take away others' happiness. If you love freedom, you will hate those who are destroying freedom. If you love justice, you'll hate injustice. If you love children, you'll hate child molesters. If you love purity, you will hate perversion. If you love the truth, you will hate lies. And God's, listen, the Bible teaches that God's wrath is on those who love the wicked. Look what it says in 2 Chronicles 19. Verse 1, And Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, returned to his house in peace to Jerusalem. And Jehu, the son of Hanani the seer, went out to meet him and said to King Jehoshaphat, Shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Therefore is wrath upon thee from before the Lord. Y'all see that right there? Hey, what are you doing loving the, the evil? Well, Jehoshaphat, I, I'm sorry. I, you know, I went to Joel Osteen's church and he was telling me we're supposed to love everybody. I, I, know, I know Israel hates God, but they all, I heard John Hagee say that we're supposed to love Israel. We're supposed to support Israel. No matter how wicked they are, we're supposed to do that. And so I'm just, uh, I'm just doing what these guys say. No, the Bible says wrath is on you because you love the wicked. We should not do that. We should, you know, and we're doing the same thing today. The exact same thing. And I love that verse too. He was specifically supporting Israel. And yet we've got God's people today support Israel. Yeah, but they're wicked. They hate, they hate Jesus. So what? Do we, no, we're not going to do that. I don't want God's wrath upon me. It makes no sense. But I can, I should love those who hate me, but I shouldn't love those who hate God. I should do what I can to re try to restore those people's relationship with God. But until things get taken care of between them and God, we will not be friends. And listen, there is a difference. Okay, I, I've been talking tonight about those who are clearly the enemies of God. There is a difference between those who don't know God and those who hate God. There's a lot of people out there that they misuse the name of God. They say some pretty nasty things, but it's, they don't know God. They don't understand God. They, they've had... Uh, you know, they, they've never probably had a clear presentation of the gospel in their life. There are many people out there who are living wicked lives. Their problem is they just don't know God. And those are the people, if you want to be friends with them, you know, there's a lot of lost people you can be friends with and you can try to win them to Christ. These are not the enemies of God. These are not haters of God. These are the ones that we are supposed to be trying to reach with the gospel. But there are those who are haters of God. In Romans chapter 1, Verse 21, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. And then that's when it goes on. It talks about the reprobates. It talks about, you know, the men with men working that which is unseemly. It talks about the homosexuals and it talks about how God gave them over to reprobate mind. Why? Because when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. They rejected God. They became an enemy of God. Most of the people out there in the world today they're not, God, they're not the enemies of God. They just don't know God. And it is our job to introduce them to God. We, don't, we shouldn't go out there and every lost person we see, once again, get careless with the hatred. You know, hey, 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 hey. You know, I mean, when you see just how homo our world's getting, you know, a lot, listen, there's a lot of people out there that look like queers, they talk like queers, they dress like queers. That's just because they watch too much queer TV. Hey, you know, listen, you watch enough Glee and things like that and Modern Family, you know, it's gonna, some of that stuff's going to rub off on you. These people aren't the enemies of God yet. They're just poor, sorry, lost souls. And we need to try to love those people and we need to try to win them over. But these people that are out there that are doing the evil, that are hurting, those who would, you know, that are molesting children, these weirdos that are out there spreading their diseases, our politicians 
who are bringing wickedness and perversion and innocent blood on the hands of us in our country. Those are the ones. These are the enemies of God. And don't be too quick to pronouncing someone as the enemy of God. Make sure you get it right. And there are, there's many out there they've never been told the truth. Those are the ones we're trying to reach. And so don't go crazy on this stuff. And listen, you're a liar and you're a hypocrite when you say you love people and then yet you love those who hate God. It, it doesn't make sense. If you really are, the more loving you are, the more hate you'll have. And you know what the real problem is today? The real problem today, what we see going on, all this love, love, love talk that we are hearing, it is evidence again that the Bible is right. This was prophesied that it was going to come to pass. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 3, 1, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. You know why Pastor Trendy in his pink shirt preaches all this love, love, love stuff and won't touch the hate stuff with a 10-foot pole? Because he doesn't want anybody to hate him. He loves himself. He wants to be popular. These politicians are out there. It's not that they, they love themselves. That's why they talk that way. That's why they're the ones all about love, love, love. They're not going to say anything that's offensive to anybody because they can't stand the thought of anyone hating them. You know why? Because they love themselves. And these weak, wimpy, effeminate preachers that are out there that are preaching this garbage, they preach it not because they love everyone else. It's because they love themselves. These guys that are going around, that guy I saw a while back preaching in his skinny jeans, talking about how we should, you know, what can we do to show the LGBTQ community the love of Jesus? And he's like crying, telling these stories about these queers that he led to the Lord. I, I'm sorry, I didn't, you know, that's not the word he used. But you know, he's, he's talking about that. Listen, he loves himself. That's why he preaches stuff like that. Because you will. You'll get popular teaching that stuff in this wicked world that we live in today. But he does. if he actually had an ounce of love in his life, he would be preaching the truth. But it doesn't make you popular. And so what do they do? They do. They pre- it's because they love themselves. And so listen, when you hear Joel Osteen preaching his stupidity, when you hear the Rick Warrens and the Bill Hybels and all those pieces of garbage that are out there, understand those guys talking about love that will get to all these people of all different you know, races and colors and creeds and sexual orientation standing up there. And I love all these people. No, they love themselves. Don't fall for that. They are lovers of themselves. The most loving people in the world are those who are telling the truth. And the, it's the, the most loving people in the world are those who hate evil. The more love you have, the more hate you will have. The whole council, yeah. No, absolutely. The whole council hates in the Bible too. And, but once again, be careful with it. We can definitely get carried away real easy if we're not careful. Don't let that happen. We need it. And we, whenever you do, whenever you feel that hatred rise up, sometimes I do. We were in Steak and Shake a while back, and there was, we were talking about before, there was two of them right, right in my line of view. The guy, man, he was wearing these tight women jeans with the sparkly things on the backside that women wear, carrying a purse. The pants were too short. They're like showing his ankles and stuff. Sitting there with his legs crossed like a woman. And I've had to sit there and I had to think it. And I did, I asked myself, is what I'm feeling right now of God or is it of the flesh? Honestly, I wasn't real sure. And so I didn't do what I felt like doing at that moment, which was using my heavy glass plate as a Frisbee to throw at his head. When I didn't do that. Because as I'm asking God to search my heart, I don't think all of it was pure and a perfect hatred. <laughs> Sometimes it is. Sometimes it's the flesh. And so I just had to try not to look. And, but we need to understand, though, feeling some of that stuff, it is. It's right. It's appropriate. And we feel that way because we have love. And so with that, let's all stand together.